when they, the owner of the Bezat Hotel, looks at the giant suitcase under the arm of this uh, well-seasoned traveler and shoulder wound, uh, he inquires courteously, uh, White Zadu of Chitra? Me, White Zadu, confirms uh, the traveler. And uh, Bay is deeply concerned about a shoulder wound. And uh, yeah, Uzbek bandits, uh, mm -hmm. and the extraordinarily handsome middle aged Bay, yeah, over six foot four common in these Bataan men, two meters tall, broad chest, fit, rugged, charismatic, that's why he's the place to stay in Herat, 1969, yeah. Uh, well, Bay, he's concerned about that bullet wound, and uh, he tells his uh, room boy, Nazim, uh, take the white Zadu uh, upstairs through the mud arch down the corridor to the last room facing the mud street. Uh, she'll be staying there for free. She's one of us. Yeah. Well, Nazim takes the White Zadu ass up to the room. She's so exhausted from this a long trip. I mean, it's half the country. Kind of hard to hear, right? Uh, well, what's in the room? Uh, pot belly stuff, wood burning stuff. It's freezing up here in the winter. We're, I'm saying everything's 2,000 meters on the desert floor, but hey, it's August. Who cares? Yeah. And the other thing, uh, stand up hookah. <laughs> it's standard, uh, you know, like in uh, the United States, you get a Bible in your room. In Afghanistan, hookah. You know, just goes with traveling. Every traveler needs one of those. Oh, yeah. Zada just collapses on a reed mat. She's exhausted. And, um, <laughs> Not going to explore the town here. Uh, uh, Zadu S. has got to think things over. The reality of traveling west tomorrow. Freaking her out, yeah, because this particular border between Afghanistan and Iran is the border between Earthistan and the straight world. <laughs> that damn Uzbek bullet. She loses consciousness among the jangling bells of the Tonga's horse-drawn carriages. So atmospheric. So dreamy they swell. The sound of the jingling bells and then fade away as they pass here with this constant. In 1969, Herat, no cars at all. No combustible engines. Shit. And, uh, let's talk about Earthistan. Earthistan is the free territory for hippies, yeah. Begins right here in Afghanistan. As soon as you set one foot across Iran into Afghanistan, you're in Earthistan, and it spreads to Pakistan, and a few lucky hippies make it up into Shitra. Wow. India, all of huge India, and Paul, and Sri Lanka, the Maldive Islands, yeah, Earthistan. So when hippies prepare to travel from Herat to Iran, they experience an identity crisis extravaganza. Oh, yeah. They become irrational. I mean, really uptight <laughs> for no good reason. And uh, the, the weakest, they... <laughs> yeah, facial twitches, 
extreme anxiety attacks, ugly identity crisis. Uh, look at you cross the border into Iran. Oh, you're a, you're you're a smarty pants little little hustler, and you bring a single kilo of opium. They will hang you. Get caught with a little hashish. You ruined your life. It's off to that end of the world jail in my shed. You botched it. So, uh, the hippie traveler uh, has to absolutely clean up his act. The last night before crossing the border into Iran, yeah. Sobering, pragmatic demand. No choice. By the straight world. Shocking bummer. After the fantasy. Sexual flamboyance. I mean, true adventure. Um... I mean, that's why you came to Earth is Stand in the first place, to find out who you are in your heart, in your life path, and then you get to act that out. I mean, starts out as Kipling and ends up as Queen Latif. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you cross into Iran, mm -hmm. insane drug laws. It even gets worse in Turkey. And yet you're a bummer, huh? Concerning the spices of life. And at the bottom of the barrel, the United States. I mean, 50 years later, they're still busted 500,000, half a million of their own citizens, ruining their lives, ruining their education. You can't get a job after that. Every year, half a million go down. Whack! Earth is dead. Straight world? <laughs>